this morning as we begin our time together. May we take a moment to remember those who have given their lives in service to our country and in service to us as well. We are grateful for their sacrifice. We are indeed grateful to their families as well for their sacrifice. And we honor those who have served and those who serve us even now. As we begin our time together, may we take just a moment of silence to remember those who have served and those who have given their lives. We do not take lightly the gift of their service nor the freedoms that we enjoy because of their sacrifice. So will you join me now for just a moment of silence remembering those who have served and loved our country even with their very lives. And Father, we thank you for your gift to us, your sacrificial love, an example of love. We thank you for the sacrifice of others who have loved our country, indeed who have loved us and who have sacrificed that we might have the freedom that we know and enjoy, the freedom to worship, the freedom to live, the freedom to speak, the freedom to come and go, we thank you for their sacrifice. We thank you for those families who are touched this weekend and in this time of remembering. We give you thanks. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Amen. French Broad Baptist Church family, thank you for joining us for our online service this Memorial Day weekend. We're so glad you're here, and we can't wait to worship with you through song and through time in God's Word. Thank you for being here. Now let's get into worship.
Join me for a moment of prayer. Lord, we thank you. On this Memorial Day weekend, we thank you for those who serve, for those who served, and for those who lost their lives while serving. When we think of a servant, Lord, we think of you. We think of somebody who left everything else behind. Serve those that they might have life and have it abundantly. Lord, may our worship be pleasing to you. May our hearts be set on you. And may our lives reflect you to the people around us. Thank you for this time, Lord. Let your name be lifted high. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, good morning to you. Thank you for choosing to allow me to speak to you this morning as I'm able to do here from the sanctuary at French Broad. After all, I know you had a choice. I know that you had an opportunity to do pretty much anything you wanted to this Sunday morning, but here you are uh, taking time uh, to spend some time listening uh, to the message that I want to share with you. And I really appreciate the opportunity to do so. I want to share with you today a message entitled, A More Excellent Way. You know, there are many ways in which you can live your life. But I want to share with you this morning what I would consider is to be the more or the most excellent way to live. As I was reflecting this weekend on those who chose to lay down their lives, literally, for our freedom, I was reminded that the power to choose is an incredibly great thing. And I considered the love that motivated those choices, the love of country, the love of family, the love of freedom. Those people who chose to make that kind of choice uh, definitely had love behind those choices. Love is a powerful motivator. It causes something to well up within us and causes us to think and act differently, uh, bravely and selflessly and sacrificially. And so this morning, I'm glad you have given me the opportunity to speak to you about this way of life called love. Jesus said it this way, no greater love has anyone than this, that he lay down his or her life for their friends. No greater love. And this morning and this weekend, we certainly have been reminded of those who have done just that. Followers of Jesus Christ understand this truth because that's just what Jesus did. He laid down his life for his friends, but not just his friends, for the entire world. He lived the way of love. That's what the Christian way is all about. You know, there really 
are only two ways to live. The way of love and then all the other ways that the world may have to offer us. The way of love and all the other ways. And this morning I want to talk to you about the way of love. Before we're done, I want you to consider deeply your choice about the way that you are living. I want you to consider the path, I want you to consider the method, I want you to consider uh, the journey that you're on. And I would ask you the question as I ask myself, am I, are you, living the way of love? It's a way to live. The Bible says it's the most excellent way to live. The path you and I choose makes all the difference in the world. The next few minutes together literally have the potential and the power to change your life. So I'm really glad that you've joined us. We're going to explain and we're going to get into 1 Corinthians 13. So if you grab your Bible, go ahead and turn there uh, with me uh, and you'll hear the Apostle Paul talk about the most or the more excellent way of life that he wants the Corinthian church, the people in that church to pursue. It's one that I want to explain to you as well. The Bible, God's Word, has much to teach us about this way of life, how to live life to its fullest. And the early followers of Christ, you know, they weren't called Christians at first. They were called people of the way. Well, what way? Well, the way of love, the way of Christ, who came and lived and showed us how to live. In fact, Jesus told his first disciples, that this would be the one mark that would set them apart from the rest of the world. That people would look at them and see how they loved each other and they would take note that they were his followers or his disciples. The world would be looking at them and defining them by whether or not they loved. In the world today, we see many who are living all kinds of different ways, right? The way of power, the way of greed, the way of pleasure, some are living the way of love. And I want to ask you the question this morning, are you living the way of love? In the New Testament, well really in the theme of the whole Bible is about teaching us how to get to know the God of heaven and how to live life according to his way, the way that he teaches us how to live. He loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, who came and taught us how to live, who laid down his life so that whoever believed in him would have eternal life and understand and know how to live the way of love. It's pretty exciting stuff. This morning, I'm gonna get into it with you. You say, well, I didn't know that God had in mind to teach me anything this morning. Well, I told you if you'd hang in here with me for just a few minutes, that this morning could change your life. So don't leave now, we're just getting to the best part. I didn't make this stuff up. Uh, it's not my words that I'm gonna share with you. It literally is God's words spoken through his word into our lives that has the power to change us this morning. It, we're gonna to look together at what love is and what it does, and we're gonna look at what love does not do and what it is not. So before this morning's over, you're gonna know what love is and what it does, and you're gonna know what it does and what it doesn't do. Some of you have been in the house you know, for a long time, and you say, this message is really something I need right now because I need to learn how to love some of the people right here sitting next to me on the sofa or, or you know, around the house. You've been struggling with living. The Corinthian church was also struggling to live in harmony with one another. And the Apostle Paul speaks these words into their lives. I will show you, uh, I will put it on the screen there, chapter 12, the really the last sentence of chapter 12 Paul said, and yet I will show you a more excellent way, a more excellent way of life that I want you to pursue. We're going to read 1 Corinthians uh, 13. Let me just give you the first, really pick up a verse 4, but let me give you the first uh, few verses there. Uh, Paul said this, if I speak with tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. It's like Paul would say, you're just making a bunch of noise if, you have, if you're able to speak all the languages of the earth and you don't have love, then people don't want to hear you. And he would go on to say, if I have the gift of prophecy and I can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, but if I have, if I have faith that can move mountains but have not love, I'm nothing. If I give all I possess... To the poor, if I'm the most generous person ever on the surface, but if I'm not motivated by love, if I surrender my body literally to the flames, if I become a martyr for a cause, 
But if I don't have love behind it, then it doesn't profit me anything. Well, what is love? I'm gonna put it on the screen there, and here we go. I want you to grab a pen, and I want you to start jotting some things down. I'll give you a list later, but let's just read through this passage together. I'll put it on the screen verse four. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. Love, it does not dishonor others or it is not rude. If you have a different translation, it reads, I love that it says it doesn't, it is not rude. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, verse five tells us. Verse six says it does not love, does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, verse eight tells us. Well, grab that pen and paper. I want you to make a list right here and now of what love is and what it does. And if you go back and look at that passage, we can pull these things out. And that's what I want us to do together. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love rejoices with the truth. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes. Love always perseveres. It does not fail. That's what love does. And let me ask you the question, are you living life the way of love? Well, what does love not do or what is not love? Well, love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude or it doesn't dishonor another person. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. Doesn't say it doesn't get angry. It says it's just not easily angered. It doesn't go off like a flash in the pan. It keeps, uh, it does not keep a record of wrongs. Don't you just love it when you get into that argument and uh, you know the person you're arguing with pulls out that, well, you know what you did last uh, week or yesterday? Or last week or last month or last year you know five years ago let me tell you what you did five and all of a sudden you've got this lifelong list is your rap sheet right love doesn't do that love doesn't keep a record of wrongs love does not delight in evil now let me ask you the question as I ask myself left side of the page right side of the page what love is what love does what love does not do, what love is not. Which side of the page are you on? Are you living a life of love and what it does or a life that is not love? If the people around you were answering that question, how would they answer it this morning? See, God has called us to a life of love. And which side of the list best describes how you're currently living? I'm gonna ask you a question. If the world lived, the entire world, think of it, the world leaders and the nations of the world and the peoples of the world, if they lived this most excellent way of life, the way of love, how different would our world be? What about our national leaders? Just if we could get our national leaders and our Congress and all the people in our nation to live a life of love and to do the things love does, how different would our nation be? How about our state, our local government, and our local leaders? How about if they were living a life of love and our community leaders? Hey, how about our church? How about if our churches in our nation were living a life of love? How about if you and me in our homes as husbands and wives and, and, and parents and brothers and sisters and children and friends and neighbors, how about if we were living on a very personal level, a life of love, what difference would it begin to make? Well, you say, that would be great, Pastor. If we were all living that kind of love, and my question is, well, why don't we? <laughs> I mean, like, it would be great if we all did, right? But why don't we? If it's so easy to do, well, it's not easy, is it? It's very difficult to live a life of love. It's very difficult to be patient and kind. It's very difficult to not be rude or easily angered sometimes. 
And right away, when we realize God's call on our life to live a life of love, we also realize that we can't do it on our own, that we need God's help. And the good news is, He is right there to help us. He's called us to live a life of love, but whatever he calls us to do, he also enables us to do. Remember last week, I talked to you about the enabling of God through his spirit living in your life. And more than anything in the world, God wants to enable you to live a life of love. And his spirit is right there to guide you. But it requires a trust and belief and faith in him to enable you to do that and to teach you how to do that. He'll be there to help you every step of the way, really starting right now. And you could just pause right where you are. And you could say, Lord, <laughs> I have not been living life the way of love. And so I'm gonna ask you to take control, take charge of my life and begin teaching me how to live the way of love, this most excellent way, this more, more excellent way of life. That's what I wanna live. And I'll promise you, if you pause and you pray that prayer, I'll promise you that God will begin to go to work in your life, helping you live that out. You say, man, I'm going to need a lot of practice. Well, fortunately, you don't have to wait to start practicing till this pandemic is over. You can start right there with the people uh, who are in your house or in your neighborhood. You can start at home with the people who know you best and who love you most and who you love most and who you know best. See, that's where God calls us to start. He calls us to start right in the place where we are to tell them, uh, look at your family and friends and just say, you know, I'm starting something new. I'm really starting to live and practice the way of love. And I want you to call me out. I want you just to say to me, no, you know, don't be mean to me, but just say, hey, you're living a life the way of love, right? And just call it to my attention when I'm not living the way of love and remind me gently because you're patient with me and you're kind with me because you too are living the way of love. Listen, you won't get it right, at least not at first. You will get better with practice and with prayer. And know this, that the Holy Spirit will be right there with you every step of the way. And that's what I'm gonna pray for you right now and invite you to pray for yourself. Let's pray. Father, we come before you, the King of heaven and earth, the God who loved us deeply so deeply that you sent your one and only son to love us and teach us how to live and how to love. Would you empower and enable my friends who are watching this morning, wherever they may be, to live a life of love through Christ. In his wonderful and powerful name I pray, amen and amen. I pray that as you go through this week, that you'll begin to pursue. Go back to this passage over and over again. Read 1 Corinthians 4, you know, 8, uh, 4, uh, 13, 4 through 8. Allow it to just be saturated into your heart and mind and begin to live that life of love. May God bless you with a great week. And I look forward to seeing you again next Sunday right here online. May God bless you and may he keep you. Amen.
Thank you for taking time to join us for this time of worship here at French Brawl this morning. Uh, I wish and pray uh, that you will have a blessed weekend, a time of remembering and celebrating uh, this wonderful country in which we live and those who have served us and served us well. More than that, I pray that you will live a life of love, that you will choose uh, to follow Christ and His way, which truly is a more excellent way. We hope that you'll let us know. Uh, if you enjoy this time of worship, reach out to us through our website at frenchbroadbaptistchurch.com. You're able to go there as well if the Lord prompts you to give or to connect with us in any way. We'd love to hear from you and look forward to seeing you again on next week. Right back here uh, online once again next week. May God bless you and keep you, and I hope that you'll have a great week. Thanks for joining us.